Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV live from DCD, Virginia at the Lansdowne Resort in Leesburg. Very excited to be here. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know how DCD, Virginia always gets the best weather every year, it seems <laughs> like. Uh, they order it up. Uh, it's amazing. But anyway, I'm, I'm really happy to be here with Lindsay Hanley, Mission Critical Sector Leader with HED. So as we always do on JSA TV, we're going to be talking about some stories, trends, and innovations going on in digital infrastructure right now. So Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks today. for having me today. It's great to be here. Absolutely. So let's dive right in. So let's jump in. Yeah. For, first of all, if you could um, set the stage a little bit, tell us a little bit about HED and your role leading the Mission Critical Market Sector for HED. So what's that like? Yeah, absolutely. So HED, for anyone that doesn't know, we are a national integrated practice. We offer all design services in-house, everything except for civil. So our process has really been built on kind of navigating and bringing all the players together at the table at the same time, which sets us apart from some of our competitors and that there's no one voice that's louder than another. Um, so that's pretty exciting. And then my role within HED is to really act as kind of a client advocate and client relationship management. So my job is sort of twofold. A little bit of understanding what is happening with trends in the market. Where are we going? How does that impact our clients? How does that impact our project teams? What decisions do we need to make so that we can best support our clients and what changes might impact how we produce our work and provide our services? Amazing. Yeah. So you're getting all the great intel on what's going on in the industry and bring I back am. to your clients. So yeah. we'll dig into that a little exciting bit. exciting time. So, yeah. So one of those things, I don't want to call it a trend, but a huge, you know, important piece of the puzzle right now when it comes to data center design is sustainability. Absolutely. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about um, how that, that works at HED? Uh, uh, of course, you all are integrating some incredible sustainable sustainable practices. So what are, what are a couple of the highlights there? Yeah, totally. So I think for HED specifically, sustainability has really become a part of who we are. We bring it into sort of our integrated practice and our, our project kickoff. We talk about it from the very beginning as part of our goals, strategies, and results. And that really drives with our clients and all of our team members and their operations staff on the client side, what are the targets that we're trying to hit? What are they looking for in a project? Because with sustainability, it's, you can't do it in silos. There's no one size fits all. You have to kind of hit it from a lot of different angles to get the most bang for your buck, I guess I would say. So with our clients right now, what we're really focusing on is how can they incorporate modular solutions or how can they offset their carbon footprint by exploring other materials other than just concrete um, and things like that. How can they you know, work with their site selection and what are their opportunities for maybe efficiencies on the cooling systems with economization? How many hours can they get? Things like that. So it's a, it's a combination of things that goes in and it really drives success if we do it early with everyone involved and then use that as the process to guide us throughout the whole design. Amazing. Well, yeah. I'm glad you all are thinking about that from so many different angles because somebody needs to be. And definitely. Definitely. It's <laughs> and really it's, important. It is very important. So thank you for that. And then, so we talked a little bit about um, trends earlier. Um, uh, of course, we're all here today at DCD Virginia talking about how we can make you know, not just data center design, but operations, you know, everything data center related better, right? So um, what are some trends and technologies that you're seeing that you're excited about for yeah, next definitely. generation data centers? Definitely. So I think some of the things that our clients are really excited about right now are sort of twofold, right? Um, so much is changing in the market right now and um, incorporating solutions that are going to be smart so that they're future proof. So they're not designing for something now that may become irrelevant in five years, 10 years, 15 years due to the changes in technology. I think is really important. So, um, so I think that's one aspect that we're that we're really looking at with clients, and then liquid cooling obviously is a big one, and that really I think is is specific to the emergence of AI, right? So AI is big, it's here, it's growing, everyone's talking about it. Um, it's kind of a unique scenario because it's a different compute environment that we've seen before. So there was enterprise and co-location and cloud, and that's still going to be there, but AI has a different set of parameters. So when we think about that next generation, it's solving different problems with higher density cooling and incorporating like liquid cooling. And that sometimes gets a bad rap, right? Because you think it would be strained on water resources. But I think what's important to know there is that we're talking about a closed loop system. Mm -hmm. So I think it goes to educating people that while it may be talked about, it's not necessarily bad. And water is a really efficient means to, to um, dissipate heat. So that's something that's big. Um, and then I think it gets really exciting with these density and changes in load and things like that. There's going to be a lot of new solutions and innovation that come out as we respond to this one. Um, and AI doesn't have to have the same geographic footprint as some of the major cloud 
data centers do. So that will result in new geographies that get explored and tertiary markets that weren't previously considered. So it's a really interesting time for innovation right now, I would say. And I think as more gets discovered, that will tie back into some of the existing project types as well. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So we've hit on a lot of the the big, the big, the big keywords, topics. I think. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we've got AI, closed loop liquid cooling, um, sustainability, of course. Um, and so I think it'd be interesting for the audience to end on talking about collaboration a little bit, which of course is, you know, bringing in the kind of people aspect that Definitely. is so critical. Um, so you had mentioned earlier across HUD, all of the different teams that you have involved. Um, and of course, projects are becoming increasingly more complex with AI. So um, how would you say that you're kind of fostering collaboration across different teams? Definitely. I mean, our, our process in, at HUD is a holistic one in that we do have all the teams in-house. So that's a little bit unique. But I think for us, it's really understanding what are the problems and the drivers and how do we work together early and kind of space plan for those things. I touched a little bit on future proofing, but to me, that's really, really a big one because that has the longest long term impact. So making decisions that maybe we're talking with the structural engineers early and understanding from an electrical and mechanical standpoint, what are some of those potential future loads that they're going to see with the higher density racks that we maybe don't know about yet because the technology is just changing so fast fast. Do you over-design your structure so you have higher capacity for floor loading and ceiling loading in the future so that you're not stuck in a decision that in five years' time is irrelevant? Because the least sustainable solution is knocking a building down or not being able to use it for its intended purpose, right? So um, so that's, I think, a big one is kind of thinking through and are there ways to incorporate modular design so you're not so stuck on maybe one solution now. It can change in the future if you have more of a plug-and-play attitude about it. And so I think having all the players focusing on the similar design constraints and aspects and what we're trying to target and how we can solve for that makes for a better product in the end. Amazing. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much. Thanks uh, for having me. It's yes. been great to be here. Absolutely. And I, I wish you an amazing first full first day of GCD Virginia. I know there's a lot in store today. I'm really excited uh, about everything that we're going to learn over the next couple of days. And uh, I was excited to learn about HED. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you to so our much viewers. For having for, us. Absolutely. Um, and thank you viewers for hanging out with us here live at DCD Virginia. Ha happy networking, everyone. We'll see you around.